Hello, 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 this is Frida. Welcome to my channel. For this video, I'm going to show you how to make Turkish inegöl köfte. It's so juicy and it's so good. Okay, so yesterday I bought some uh, ground beef. So I do have, I put a, a video on my Instagram page. So I would highly recommend you to go and watch it, what they are. So what I did is I bought one package of uh, ground beef, one package of ground beef and lamb and one package of lean ground beef so what I did is I put them all together and I've been mixing them so it as it's been mixing so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the ingredients okay so uh, you need some sort of fat so that uh, lamb ground will help to make it nice and soft and juicy so uh, let's get started, okay? So I'm just gonna move my camera towards the ingredients. Okay, so when you go to the restaurants to eat uh, uh, Turkish köfte, no one gives you the recipe correctly. They always give you less what needs to be done. So I'm 53 years old and I've been trying and trying for years. And finally I found way how to do it okay so I'm gonna write down uh, the ingredients what you need and pin it on this video so this is my own recipe believe it or not no one gave me anything it's it's like it was like a nightmare <laughs> uh, you go to the restaurant and you say I live in Canada and I can't buy this uh, so uh, the taste is not same so they give you the recipe, but it's not the same. Okay, so I found a way. Okay, so what you need is one kilogram of uh, ground beef or with mixed with lamb. You need uh, one uh, dry onion, one big one. You need a huge one, and it needs to be uh, uh, grind or some way. But I, I'm going to show you how to do how I do mine because uh, uh, my grind my grind you know the old-fashioned way that you grind it it's, it's broken and I, I haven't had a chance to buy a new one but uh, I'll give you the secret okay so uh, what you need is uh, you need uh, a little bit a handful a handful of uh, uh, grinded uh, what's this is called breadcrumbs can you read it come on focus breadcrumbs can you see so you need about a handful of this I buy it from the Italian store you can buy where, wherever I, or, or Arabic stores that I can find okay and that's one you need uh, you need uh, baking soda I put a tablespoon a tablespoon of baking soda Okay, so we're done with the baking soda. Okay. Put this aside. And uh, you need lemon juice. So what I do is I squeeze, squeeze one full of lemon juice together. And I mix it with that. Just like this. Okay, it's done. So mix it. You need to stir it. You need to dissolve this. Stir it, stir it. You need milk. Okay, I said onion. I'm adding uh, garlic. Okay, I'm going to move you to my, um, what you call it, my chopper here. Let me just, so uh, you know what, I'll move my chopper here. The kitchen kitchen aid chopper that I bought and I already gave you my feedback so I move it to pure instead of chop and I put the onions as well one uh, just a couple of uh, garlic so I chop the onions just like this and I uh, put I don't know one three, five six seven of the garlics like this that's okay so I'm going to pure pureed it and I'll be right back 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drain the water, the liquid, the liquid from the onions that I have cured. See how it looks? So I'm just going to empty this, just like this. And I am going to start uh, separating the liquid from the onion. And I need the pure onion, not the liquid. So what I do is... And it takes me a while, so I'll be right back. While I am trying to separate, I will add this to the ground beef and I will have it. Uh, my KitchenAid will do the work for me. Stir it. Okay, I have to use my hand because uh, you have to push hard and hard and hard. So I separated the liquid. So what I'm going to do is... See how much liquid? There's lots of liquid. So I'm going to pour this into the, with the ground beef. And I'm going to start adding the rest. So let me just move this towards here. So I'm just going to empty those onions that I have. Uh, and I'm going to continue having the KitchenAid stir this the more you stir it the better it becomes okay this is how it looks I need to use this tool though I don't know it doesn't what happens is it goes on next to the goes to the bowl okay so I'm gonna put a little bit of this like I said about a about a handful just just like you can not too much though when you're uh, barbecuing or when you're frying it uh, they do get burned so not too much just a little bit so I'm gonna let it uh, stir again and I'm gonna add the the pepper whichever you like it's up to you your taste right so I'll, I will let this stir okay so this is gonna stir while it's stirring I'm going to add the dry ingredients okay the dry ingredient is cumin just have a little bit left I need to buy more okay, I'm going to shut this because it's very loud so this is cumin C-U-M-I-N, I believe. Seasoning salt, which is my number one. Okay, I don't want it too salty because there's salt in it as well. Oregon, I love Oregon. Oregon, and then pepper. Okay, so I'm going to add these. Uh, I don't want to add too much salt, but uh, yeah. So pepper, you can add as much as you want, because <laughs> pepper won't give it you know, too much salt. And Oregon, again, Oregon, I would say a tablespoon. So I'm going to stir this while I'm stirring it. I'm going to add milk that is the secret no one tells you that so i've been doing it for years <laughs> finally i found the secret is milk it can be any milk i have two percent any milk will do it okay so i'm gonna let it stir and i'll be right back okay i'm going to add the milk but i don't want to add too much so there is no uh how much how, how much to put in so i don't want it want my uh my Turkish kofta to be watery so I'll just add a little bit and if I need to add more I will continue to add okay so I'm gonna let this slowly stir can you see can you see the middle is turning into a ball that means it's ready but I'm just going to add a little bit of olive oil. 
just a little bit just to give it a little bit of shine that's all to it my milk is okay because it already turned and I'm just gonna let it turn a little bit more the more I would say let it turn about 10 even 15 minutes with this machine with hand it's really hard it's very bad for the wrist but if you have a KitchenAid or something like this it's very useful so I do it for 15 minutes I'll let, I'll let it turn a little bit stir it a little bit and I'll be right back see how it looks I had to add a little bit of milk because uh, it's pretty dry and I, I add uh, seasoning salt this is a different one I added this a little bit just to give that taste so uh, this is ready to rest okay so I'm just gonna take this off and uh, show it to you guys so put this down this okay so this is ready to rest I usually leave it in the fridge 24 hours up to three days the more it stays the more it rests okay it's a bit way better and it, after 24 hours when you're ready Put this back on the mixer let it mix i don't know another five to ten minutes and you are ready to go okay so what i do is i put this lid on okay oops wrong one wrong way so i put this lid on see it will stay in the fridge for up to three days after more than don't let it sit for over three days so I will put this in the fridge. Okay, meanwhile, the, the inigur kofta that we just made rests in the fridge. And like I said, when you're ready after 24 hours, what you do is you shape it like this. And then I put them in a freezer. If I'm not going to barbecue or fry it or stir fry, fry it, put them in the freezer like this and it comes out. Look at the color okay so what I'm going to do is on a pan because it's wet outside it's pretty it rained a lot so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on the pan here and show you how you can do it indoors but I would highly recommend you to do, do a barbecue with this make bigger for hamburgers oh it tastes so good it smells good and your neighbor's gonna ask what is that smell and they're gonna ask for the recipe I can I can swear to you they're they are going to wonder what is the smell okay so I'm gonna put the pan and I'll be right back so I have this pan I'm gonna put it into medium heat and I'm gonna let it heat okay, I bought this at Winners here in uh, Edmonton looks like I forgot to unpause it so what I did is I put a little bit of pan so it won't be stick to the pan pan <laughs> pan and I'm just gonna let it let it and it's on low the heat is on low though yeah. okay, the heat is on low as you can see it's not on high This is the reason I would highly recommend you to do this on a barbecue because uh, and then uh, it tastes way better and it looks way better but unfortunately it's wet outside I didn't want to go out okay lots of bugs and mosquitoes so uh, just gonna stir it Ooh. this is too much uh, I'm supposed to make those lines but uh really hard okay, turn it goes away too low and I'm going to let it cook okay so you can see the other side is done just gonna cut this and see if it's cooked 
it is cooked. Again, I would highly recommend you to cook this on a barbecue. Well, I hope you like this uh, short, um, try to make it as short as I can, because uh, the process is pretty long. Gonna let these sit. And this is, well, yeah, it's a little bit burnt, sorry about that. See, can you see the juice? See how juicy it is? Mm -hmm. Gonna taste it. Okay, that one is still there because in the middle it's, I can feel that it's not cooked yet. So this one is perfectly cooked. Mm. Oh my God. Perfect. So it's a little bit salty. But on this batch, I didn't put salt, just seasoning salt. Mmm. -hmm. <laughs> Fantastic. So I hope you enjoyed this. Try it. You will love it. Love it. Love it. Take care, everybody. I'll see you on my next video. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. This one more time. Mm, mm, mm.